Welcome everyone as we jump into our new series, Day by Day. Uh, listen, a number of years ago, we decided to start hiking with our kids. Now, all four of them were under 10 at the time, and we weren't quite, we weren't quite sure what we were getting into. Uh, after a few short and mostly failed attempts, we did come up with another plan. We decided to head up Kyle Canyon Road up Mount Charleston and hike Mary Jane Falls. Now, uh, it's a little over a three-mile hike, round trip, which, you know, that's not short with kids with little legs, but there were a few things about it that made it seem right. Uh, there was a destination, right? It's good to know you're heading somewhere good. We were headed to a, a waterfall, apparently, Mary Jane Falls. In the desert, who's not stoked about a waterfall? Now, spoiler alert, uh, this name is a bold-faced lie. Like, someone really generous named this. Like, a more realistic name would be, like, Mary Jane Drip. But still, it's water in the desert, and so we had our destination. Uh, The second important thing about the hike is that it was fairly doable to start the hike. Like, the start of the hike was pretty good. Like, you can see here, pretty straight, pretty flat, cover some ground, uh, get some confidence underneath, uh, see some fresh things. It It was good, and the kids liked it. Uh, And finally, we knew ahead of time, the kids didn't know, but we knew there was a real challenge for them. Uh, And if our kids were going to become hikers, they were going to have to overcome some challenges. They would never grow in always comfortable and easy hikes. So uh, what they didn't know is that the second half of the hike is all switchbacks. Now, those hikers, people who have hiked and looked at maps, you know what this means. People who haven't, you may not. Uh, When you need to gain a lot of elevation up a steep slope, The way that you do that is you work back and forth. You switch back over and over and over, gaining a little bit of elevation at a time. So the trail at any one point isn't crazy steep, but you can work your way up. Now, we knew this part of the hike would be kind of defeating for the kids. It is fairly steep. Uh, You move back and forth, and so the scenery doesn't really change that much. Uh, And you can get tired quickly, even though you don't feel like you're covering a lot of distance going back and forth. And you begin to wonder this. Are we ever going to get there? In fact, I've been wondering this lately, and it feels like a lot of people around me are too, and they're feeling that way about this pandemic. Are we ever, are we ever going to get there? Whatever there looks like, whatever that means, we just kind of feel stuck. You know, it feels a little bit like switchbacks. A lot of effort and a lot of changing directions without feeling like we're getting very far. Repetitive in one sense that, The constant challenge, the masks and worry and political opinions, the constant stress and so many things wake up. It's like another day of this. And at the same time, it's totally unpredictable. Like switchbacks going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This is open, this is not open. This is closed, this is now open. Masks are optional, masks are mandatory. School's online, school's now in person. Wait a minute, school's gonna be a blend. Just kidding, school is now entirely online. So many tough decisions, but back and forth, back and forth. I'm back to work. I'm furloughed. Money's going in. Money's coming out. Business is good. Business is a disaster. There's so much unpredictable. Any given day, based on how strong people are feeling, their reactions can be in so many different directions. There's so much unpredictability, even though it kind of feels like Groundhog Day sometimes. For our kids, at the beginning of our hike, they were willing to walk this straight and predictable path with this gentle slope and constantly changing scenery. Great situation. They settled into a groove and a rhythm and were pretty comfortable and confident. But Then came the switchbacks. They did not see the challenge of these coming. And somewhere in the second switchback, I began to feel the sense of deep betrayal they had from me. Like, Dad, why are you doing this to us? Don't you love us anymore? This part of the hike was not at all what they expected. And they were saying things like, why can't we just go back to the flat, straight, easy part? Why, why does everything have to change so much? How much further? How long will this last? This is awful. Does this sound familiar at all? What my kids at the time didn't realize is uh, that we, we knew the switchbacks were coming. My wife and I, their parents, we knew that these would be challenging. We knew that our kids would need us with them and that they would need each other. They would need constant encouragement and coaching. We also knew that they would need reminded that there was a destination to which we were heading that was worth it and they needed some motivation along the way. 
Now, my wife is both a genius and an overpacker. And on any given trip or hike, I'm never sure at the beginning which one it is, but on this day at Mary Jane Falls, she was a genius. After the second switchback, just as betrayal started to set in, we stopped uh, and she asked to get something out of this regrettably heavy bag that I was carrying. So I took it off and, and in the top of the bag was something I didn't really ever anticipate. It was a, it was a bag of oversized marshmallow. Now, in all of my genius, I immediately drew some conclusions, which I always assume are right, and I was ticked. She brought s'mores. Are you kidding me? How much melted chocolate is in here? This is why the bag is so heavy. So I started shuffling through to real, thinking maybe it's full of firewood. Like, where, what's the plan for fire to make these s'mores? I'm, which I'm pretty sure that was illegal at the time anyway. No, it wasn't full of wood. And after I handed her the bag and started rifling with all of my bad assumptions... I look over and she looks at each of the kids and she says, every time we finish two switchbacks, we're gonna stop and everyone's gonna get a marshmallow. We're all gonna rest if just for a moment and look back at how far we've come and look ahead and commit to going together. Genius. And she knew it. It was abundantly clear in the look on her face when she handed me my marshmallow. Our kids did make it up to Mary Jane Falls and they had a blast playing and splashing in the puddles of water, exploring a cave that we didn't even know was there, meeting new people. They did it. It was awesome. They made it. In the middle, you never could have told them how good it was going to be. But they did it, and here's how they did it. Two switchbacks at a time, doing just the next bit of what was in front of them with constant encouragement and coaching and regular rests from their parents in a deep trust that where they were headed was better than where they had been. I wonder if this isn't exactly how we should make it through the months and weeks ahead. Day by day, two switchbacks at a time, constant encouragement, remembering a destination. It might be this kind of shift that happened in the middle of a hike with our kids. It's a bit like our lives right now. You know, before we had a sense of what to expect, we were like our kids on that flat, easy part. And I gotta confess, I. I I had that sense about things. In fact, I resonate with something that the half-brother of Jesus, a guy named James who wrote uh, uh, one of the books of the Bible, he said this in, in James chapter four, verse 13. I resonate with this. He said, look here, you who say, and I gotta just say, I'm someone who does this. Today or tomorrow, we're gonna go to a certain town. We'll stay there for a year. We will do business there and make a profit. Now, I've never said those exact words, but essentially, I have said this. Listen, today or tomorrow, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go there, here's how long we're gonna be there, here's what we're gonna do, and here's how it's gonna turn out. Does that resonate with you at all? Anyone make plans before all of this that haven't worked out? You know, I said this in my own way. I can resonate with this. It even seems wise at times. Uh, I remember back in January and February, our family was signing up for and making plans to be a part of spring sports. We had summer plans that we had made and booked. We had places that we were excited to go. I was, at the time, in, in February, I was working with a team of 10 leaders on our staff to pray and plan for the next year of ministry, dreaming and imagining what our church would look like at this time of year and, and then again this time next year. And I'll be honest, I had all kinds of expectations, assumptions, and then boom, <laughs> pandemic. Like the turn a half mile into the hike with my kids, everything changed, and it got harder. Even as it set in, like I, I never imagined it would last this long. Like I never thought I would be someone who would actually know uh, the name of a person who died from COVID-19. When we stopped gathering as a church, we were really kind of regretting that we said we'd close for three weeks because we thought that might be too long to close for a whole three weeks. I never imagined that we would not have our campuses open for months. Our family never imagined months of schooling at home or missed summer vacations or seasons canceled. We definitely never thought we would be looking at another semester this fall, of school at home. We were so confident. This is not what we thought things would be like. So many things that we thought we could count on, like a given for the pattern of our life of kids leaving for school through the spring and the fall each day. Such a basic given was no longer given. Things that we thought we could count on, we couldn't count them in the way that we thought. 
How about you? My guess is I'm not alone in saying things like this, that today or tomorrow, we're gonna go to a certain town and we'll stay there for a year, we'll do business there and make a profit. We speak with such boldness and expectation and assumption. On any normal day, this sentence actually seems like totally rational. In fact, it kind of just sounds like good planning. But when we think about what life with God really looks like and our lives actually look like, there's at least two major problems in here. And and until we find our way through these, we're not going to live well day by day, especially in the challenging times that we have right now. The first problem in this statement is a bad assumption. Here's the bad assumption in that statement. The assumption in that statement, and honestly one that I've made and I bet a lot of us have, is that we know what life will look like tomorrow. Sometimes enough days in a row looking the same makes us assume that the next one will look the same. And it's wake up calls like what we're existing, what we're experiencing right now that remind us, you know what, we actually don't know. James uh, actually asks a really powerful question after that statement I read earlier. This is where we get this missed assumption. He's like, how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Well, the truth is, like, if I'm honest, I, I don't. So many things out of my control, so many things out of our control, so many things beyond our expectation and awareness could happen by tomorrow. Now, I would never actually say, I know for sure what happens tomorrow, but I've acted like it. And I bet I'm not alone. We all held expectations that seem to have faded forever because of COVID, and we are grieving those losses. We want to know what's next because when we know what's next, or better yet, when we think we know what's next, it gives us a sense of comfort and confidence. And if enough times in a row those things actually happen, we start to believe that we can know what's next. But we know this deep down. Like when we actually step back, we know that we actually have so little control over what happens next. And we're learning that in this season. I'm learning that in this season in a new way, not just with my head, what I would say out loud to someone so I didn't sound silly, but in my my heart and in the experience of life. What James says next resonates so deeply. Not only do I not know what's gonna happen next, but he says this, your life is like a morning fog. It's here a little while, and then it's gone. Now, I've always read that in terms of uh, the loss of life. And I think that meaning is here. I think that is true. I think many times long before a pandemic or anything else, people's lives changed suddenly because of tragedy or other things. I think that meaning is in this. But I also, as I'm experiencing this and trying to listen to God in the midst of what he's saying here, I feel like I feel this in terms of the life I expected to be living this summer and into this fall with my family. That's gone. Like that disappeared. What, what I had expected in terms of what a second year of leading in a church like this would look like and who I thought I would be doing that with, it's gone like the fog, like June gloom in California. It's burned off by noon. Life as we imagined it, in a lot of ways, at least for right now, is gone and I'm grieving and it's a struggle and I bet I'm not the only one. You see, in the comfort and in the rhythm of life before COVID-19, we began to have expectations about tomorrow. And listen, dreams and hopes are not bad at all. They're great, they're good. But in the grief that comes with all of these changes, it has to be expressed, acknowledged, and experiences, which never ex- pretend it's not there. We must have grace and space for the loss we're experiencing in the grief. And we in this season can let God teach us new ways to think and act in regards to tomorrow, in the future, how to live today, today, and to trust him for tomorrow. It seems to me that as I listen to a lot of people, many people want things to get back to a sense of predictability and reliability, back to the path that's a little straighter, flatter, easier, where the scenery changes more quickly and progress comes easier. But here's my question. What if that's not what's next? This season has already lasted much longer than many anticipated. And many keep fighting and looking for ways for things to go back to what they were before, but it doesn't seem like that's happening soon. There will likely come days like we knew before COVID-19, but it does not seem like those days are coming soon. So there's a question worth asking in the meantime. How do we live really well in days as tough as these? 
where any day could contain anything and really all we can count on is today. Are contentment and thriving really options in times like these? Could we really trust that God is up to something unique in each of us, all of us together, that could only, maybe only happen in this climate? For the next number of weeks, we're gonna look across the story of the people of God and ask this. How did people live and thrive day by day with God in times that were really unpredictable, not knowing what the next day would hold, challenging, where life needed to be lived one day at a time? seems to be part of what James is saying here and what we've been reading. If we don't know what tomorrow holds, then we gotta think well about how we do today and trust God for tomorrow. Which brings us to the second problem with that statement that sounded so natural. Today or tomorrow I'll go here, I'll do this, I'll do that, and I'll make money. There's a, not only a bad assumption in that, but there's an exclusion. Where's God in that plan? Where's God in that plan? Today or tomorrow, I will go here to this city. I will start a business and I will make money. There's nowhere to be found. On purpose, on accident, it doesn't matter. There's no consideration of what God wants in that. But here's the question. Who's the only one who is actually seen tomorrow? God. Who's the only one who has promised to walk with us from where we are to where we will be tomorrow? God. Like parents who have been on this hike before and are inviting their kids to experience the excitement, the accomplishment, and the joy of it together, God is inviting all of us to life with him one day at a time, day by day. We don't know what lies ahead, but here's the thing, we don't need to. We can be open-handed because we know him, and he knows what's ahead. Like kids who have never been to the top before, we can trust God, that he loves us, that he'll go with us, and that he has good in mind for us. It's like Martin Luther once said, we can live with two days on our calendar, this day and that day. Today, living today, trusting God for that day when he finishes all that he has started. Now living like that can be tough. We often want to wander off and do our own things. We wanna cut through the switchbacks. Some of us, we don't even mean to wander off. Like We just get into a rhythm in life and get lulled into thinking that we actually do know what tomorrow holds or that we actually can somehow control how things are gonna go. Well, James gives us a first step to live way better than that statement that sounded so natural that has two major holes in it. There's a better approach. In verse 15, he says this. What you ought to say is, If the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. You see, this statement, this plan, begins with God. Begins with the one who does know tomorrow. Begins with the one who is capable of things turning out differently. Considering first what he wants. Acknowledging that he knows all the things that we don't know. This is how we want to live. Too often what we end up settling for is we decide what we wanna do and then we ask God to make it good. Or we don't even acknowledge or engage God until things have gone wrong and then suddenly we're upset at him for things not going the way that we decided they should go. But God can handle wherever we're coming from, whether we've pushed him to the side or whether we've forgotten to acknowledge and begin with him. He will meet us right where we are no matter how we got ourselves there and he's inviting us to better. We can begin with God. When we learn how good that can be, we don't want, on purpose or on accident, to be anywhere else to exclude God or presume upon him. In fact, James gives some really direct language to this. He says, listen, if you're not gonna begin with God, then what you're really doing, he says it so strongly, he says, otherwise, what you're doing is you are boasting about your own pretentious plans, and all such boasting is evil. Boom, James James always brings us strong. Now, I don't like thinking about applying those words to me, a person who boasts or is pretentious. Those aren't words I would put on my resume or I would never hope people would introduce me that way, but I gotta be honest. When I count on my plans existing the way I imagine them tomorrow, there's a little bit of arrogance in me that says, you know what? I know what tomorrow holds. I'm the one who can predict the future. There is a bit of arrogance in there. And it is a bit pretentious for me to pretend to be something I'm not. I'm not God, I don't know. And in our clearest moments, all of us know this. 
Certainly in this season, we are learning this. We know that we are not in control and that we are not God. But here's the thing. Because of Jesus, we've learned that the God who is, is good that he's loving, that he's with us, and he has seen tomorrow, he knows what's coming, he has breaks with marshmallows in mind for us, where we look back and celebrate how far we've come and commit together to going on and going forward to all the good that he has in mind. He knows about the cave that we haven't even imagined yet and is excited to explore it with us. And so in this season where everything is challenging, back and forth and here and there, and whoa, I didn't see that coming, or that's way worse than I thought, or why can't it be this way? We have this chance, we have this amazing chance, maybe only in this season, to learn how to live with God day by day. With a heart and an attitude in line with what James says, when we have a posture that says, if the Lord wants us to, if the Lord wants us to, let's begin there. If the Lord wants us to, God, what do you have in mind for today? God, I'll trust you with tomorrow. It's not about just some combination of words or what we ought to say. It's a heart posture. It's an attitude that begins with God and what he wants, knowing that he knows what tomorrow holds and that he can carry us from here to there. And that even when there are switchbacks between where we are and the good God has in mind for us, he will carry us through. These next weeks, we're gonna get really practical about how to live this sort of heart and attitude in a season that demands that we live day by day. To get started, though, I, I wanna encourage you to spend some time in this scripture, James chapter four, verses 13 through 17. Listen to what God is saying in these scriptures, ideally with some other people, so that we can together discover what God is inviting each of us to change in our lives so that we can live really well with God each day. Day. In fact, these scriptures are, are, are on our website at canyonridge.org slash DBS. They're there to help you along with some questions that can guide you and some friends with some great conversation so that we can listen to what God is saying, what he's inviting us to, and to commit to some action together and support one another along the way. But between now and then, here's a question to get you started. What will you do today to live with God? Just today. Trusting him open-handedly for whatever tomorrow holds. Acknowledging that we're not the people who knows what tomorrow holds. That's not us. He's the one who knows what tomorrow holds, so I can trust him. I just know that he holds me today, so I'm good. We can live really well with him today, one day at a time. And the good news is we can trust him. That he is good. He is for us. He will be with us. He proved it when he sent Jesus. Jesus' life showed all of us what God is like. Jesus' death paid for any of our brokenness, our failure, our sin that would separate us from God. His resurrection shows us the victory of new life that God has in mind for us. Not a life stuck in believing that we have to play God or control tomorrow, but instead we could live today with him, trusting him with tomorrow because he's been there and he knows and he's seen it and he'll go with us. And because of Jesus, God's spirit alive in us, when we point our lives in Jesus' direction, God's spirit gives us the desire and the power to live the way that God calls us to, day by day. It's this kind of trust in God that allows us to embrace tough seasons, to willingly offer each day to him for whatever he wants. In fact, maybe one of the best ways to begin that is for each of us to offer all of ourselves in good and in bad to him as we remember what Jesus has done for us in communion. Let's take communion together.